Hello everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about um, active transport and secondary active transport just to give you an example of that. Um, uh, as you uh, look at the picture of my three kids, um, we'll move on and look at the handout that you got on transport through membranes. And in there it says a little bit about the type of co-transport that we're talking about. That's what we talk right here. Facilitated diffusion in action. Secondary active transport. This is where a gradient is set up. And that gradient is set up using active transport, which uses energy. In this case, it's a sodium gradient. So there's less sodium inside the cell than there is outside the cell. This gradient is then used to move another molecule into the cell uphill. But this is done through a passive process riding down the sodium gradient. Okay, so in other words, sodium is transported out of the cell. This creates less sodium in the cell than outside the cell. So sodium wants to get in. However, the membrane um, between the gut, say the gut lumen, and the cell is impermeable to sodium. Thus, sodium wants to get in, but can't. In the membrane, there is a co-transport protein. It's a facilitated diffusion, therefore it's a mediated transport. And this has two uh, places for molecules to bind. Sodium and a glucose or an amino acid. Amino acids also can move in this way. Transport will not occur unless both are there. Once both are there, then transport can occur down the sodium gradient. And that's what this is talking about here. And that's how it gets the term active transport, but it's secondary active transport. Have a little, a little um, animation here for you to see of secondary active transport. So what we have, we have sodiums here, we have potassiums here because it's actually the sodium potassium pump that runs this. And we also have glucoses. Now out here, this is be the lumen of the gut. In other words, where digested food is moving through. And inside here is the inside of the cell. This is the co-transport molecule here. One spot for sodium, one spot for glucose. Remember, both have to be filled before the transport occurs. And this membrane between the lumen of the gut and the inside of the cell, this membrane right here, is impermeable to sodium. So it starts by pumping sodium out and potassium in. Notice ATP is being used here. Along comes ATP and that pumps sodium out. Notice we're getting more sodiums out here and fewer sodiums in here. Okay, we're going to run the pump one more time. Now the sodium will bind in here along with the glucose and that moves the glucose in against its gradient. Because notice there is more glucose inside the cell than there was outside the cell. So let's see that again. Okay, more glucose inside than outside, but see, actively transporting glucose into the cell would be very expensive. Glucose is a much, much larger molecule than a little sodium ion. So it takes less energy to transport sodium out than it would be to actively transport glucose in. So a passive method, which is as facilitated diffusion, is used. So let's run it again. I'm going to pump out the sodium. We're going to be talking about the sodium potassium pump again later on when we talk about nerve and muscle. Okay, so we pump out the sodium. Now we have sodiums out here. Glucose wants to get in, but it can only can't get in against its gradient. Now we're going to go down the sodium gradient and transport glucose in. It's a lot less expensive. Here comes the glucose. Okay, so this is a way for the cell 
to pull glucose in from the digested food uphill against but only using a passive method okay so I hope this helped and if you have any questions please ask them thank you